This is the subject of this video. It is not a cartridge. It looks like a cartridge. It has an expanding lead front end up here. And it has an extraction groove. And it has a primer. Looking carefully, you'll see that that primer has been used. Now, for those who are not really into ammunition, this is a cartridge. This brass colored portion is a bullet or projectile. It probably extends back somewhere this far. This is an extraction groove. It happens to be bigger than the cartridge. So a rifle cartridge consists of a bullet or projectile. A cartridge case, in this case it's uh, nickel plated. It's filled with probably smokeless powder, which extends from here to about here. Or maybe about that much. And a primer. This primer is in the center. So this is a center fire cartridge. So this assembly constitutes a cartridge or a round. In non-military cartridges, uh, the caliber is identified. This is a 44 Remington Magnum. Uh, Dirty Harry, if you know that name. And this is a expanding exposed lead bullet in the end of the cartridge case. This is a used cartridge case. It's also a civilian so it's marked with the manufacturer, it's Spear in this case. And this is a 40 Smith & Wesson. The subject of the video is a Federal FC civilian cartridge case marked 40 Smith & Wesson with the center primer but it's been used, it's fired. This is a bullet made from a used 40 millimeter Smith & Wesson case. The case has been filled with lead and then swaged in a hydraulic press or maybe hand press so that it comes to this dimension. It's, this brass part is the used 40 Smith & Wesson casing. The center has been filled with lead and during the swaging process the front end of the case was reduced in diameter, tapers, filled with lead and serrated to produce the necessary weakened area so it expands on impact. This is a bullet or projectile that's intended to be loaded into not this particular case but a case similar to this. So a reloader would Check the outside diameter of the case, push the used primer out, stick a new primer in, put a measured amount of powder in there, and then insert a bullet. Bang, we've got a cartridge or a round. The idea of using spent cases 
to make jacketed bullets is, is not new. It dates back probably to the 20s. I did not make this bullet. I did not swage it or do anything. Two friends of mine took on this project. What I intend to do is remove this rim and taper the back end of the case, thinking that tapering this in, in t removing the extractor group at the same time might improve its aerodynamics. I believe their ultimate goal or intention is to use a case called a 10 millimeter case, which is this diameter, this extractor groove, but the case is longer. You know, maybe, I don't know how much longer. Which will allow more lead, which in turn will create more weight. Now, notice the extractor groove area has been squished. And one of the reasons that was done, the squishing, is because the diameter of this case is 10 millimeter. The diameter of the finished bullet is 11.46 or 4.51 inches. It's just a little above 45 caliber. In fact, I think this is one of the 45 nominal calibers. However, it's fatter than the parent case. Well, that was done during the squishing process. It got fatter as it got shorter. And that rim extraction area moved up on the case. See, it's bigger. Now, I don't know if this was squished to its final diameter or squished to a little bit bigger diameter and then put through a uh, sizing die to reduce the whole thing to this finished diameter. Or it could have been just expanded by into a finished diameter by putting it in a, a, a closed bottom die and then just pushing downward which crimped the, the open end of the case. You can see the smaller diameter it took. And then expanded the remainder of the case. I'm not sure. I'm just going to, I hope, provide a boat tail rear end, they call it. Now, in order to uh, put a boat tail on, I'm probably going to have to make it a rebated boat tail. Not, not this groove here. This. But see how this comes in rather sharply and then travels away to 11 degree angle. So this is a normal boat tail and this is a rebated boat tail. I think I'll end up with something like that and a short, shorter tail. I've taken the four jaw chuck off. I'm using a Jacobs rubber flex. I hope this collet closes up enough. Now, when holding something in, in this chuck as short as, with as small a bearing surface as the, uh, of the bullet, as the bullet, I recommend filling the back of it, of the collet with 
a rubber plug. the rebated rim uh, completely formed I managed to put a little tiny slope on this it's a fair amount of work I mean this is a fair amount of work This is a fair amount of lathe work to do on something that's going to be shot once. So if you've enjoyed this little piece of trivia, um, drop me a comment. Try to give me a thumbs up. Get the thumb in the view there. If you really like it, subscribe. Come back. Thank you.